Shalom to everyone and wishing you all good health. My name is Israel Mayer Kin. During this most unprecedented time and strangest turn of events to occur in recent memory, I would like to share with you a profound thought and message that should shake us all to the core. What you are about to hear and see will not be shared with you by your local rabbi, and I strongly urge you to watch this video till the end, as you will hear some earth-shattering information that will explain clearly why we are all suffering from COVID-19 and what we must do to eradicate this plague. We are all seeing the devastating effects of the coronavirus and its implications worldwide. Some people have made video recordings requesting mass tehillim and other tefillahs to be said along with practical videos of how to prevent oneself from contracting the virus and preventing its spread. It is quite clear that almost no one alive today has ever seen a plague of this magnitude which is affecting so many people in so many countries. What I'm about to tell you might sound harsh and direct, but you should know that I will not be merely stating my opinion. My words are the words of Chazal, and they cannot be disputed, although unfortunately they are being ignored by the masses. The rabbis have withheld certain pertinent information from us, and I therefore must reveal it to you. Chazal and Masechet Yevomis 63a have clearly stated that tragedies that, that befall the nations are meant to be a wake-up call for the sins that we fail to correct. Now, there are many sins that we need to correct, but if there's only one that was the source of the coronavirus, which one would it be? So first of all, we should know that in Parshas Hazinu 29, Pasuk 28, it states, Hanistoros la Hashem elokeinu, vaniglo islonu levoneinu ad oilom. This means that we are not held responsible for individual sins of others that we have no knowledge of. However, what is common knowledge to the masses, we are all held responsible for those sins. Rashi there states explicitly that if we don't eradicate the evil that is known to us, and being ignored by us, then we are all punished. While we don't have prophets today to tell us the answer to why COVID-19 is here, it is revealed to us from our Torah. It is still amazing to me how rabbis fail to mention a Gemara that commands us to pay attention to a particular problem, plaguing our community. Chazal mentioned in Masechet 139a, that if you see tragedies coming upon us, you should check and root out the evil rabbis who are judges amongst us, as their corrupt judgments are what brings down the wrath of Hashem. Yes, I said it. Corrupt rabbis are a source of tragedy. This Gemara references the prophet Micha, speaking of rabbinic corruption. In Pirkei Avos, chapter 1, Mishnah 18, it states that the world endures because of justice, truth and peace, and without them, the world would collapse. The prophet Yirmiyahu in Megillas Echa, chapter 2, pasuk 14 states, Your false prophets whom you've trusted in their moral and spiritual insights have in fact prophesied falsely in whitewashing your iniquities and soothing your conscience by indulging in deceptive oracles. Our sages tell us that those false prophets that lived in those days were not just street bums, but rather rabbinic leaders who appeared quite noble, but very corrupted. Our real prophets would rebuke the people very harshly and very direct. This is in contrast with the false prophets and with some, and with some rabbis today, who instead of initiating real change and offering real rebuke, they instead soothe your conscience into believing that everything will be okay. The reality is that since the time of the Beis Amigdash, our leaders have fallen prey to corruption through bribery and through outside influences that are the antithesis to the Torah in order to enrich themselves as well as to find favor in the eyes of their constituents. During the time of the second Beis Amigdash, there was Torah being learned, mitzvahs performed, but that didn't stop the destruction, because they had sinas chinam, baseless hatred. 
Chazal tell us that when the Jews were united, despite their sins of idol worship, they would win battles. In contrast, when the Jews were outwardly righteous, no idol worshiping, but they were not united, they would lose battles. So we see from the above that baseless hatred causes lack of peace, and corrupted rabbis cause lack of justice. You can now see and understand, based on what our sages have taught, that Hashem will not tolerate the above, and in fact has already destroyed the second base Amigdash. If you are brave, go ahead and ask your rabbi why he has never brought up this Gemara of Masechet Shabbat 139a in any of his previous sermons. I am no one special. I'm just making you aware of what Chazal have stated and what the reality of today's world is. You see, I'm one of the many victims of rabbinic corruption as it relates to Jewish divorce and the rabbinic courts. I did what every Jew is supposed to do, and that is to go to Besden to arbitrate my divorce. However, I was given a rude awakening as to the major perversion of justice which has occurred in my case, as well as countless others. I am speaking to you today as the living example of someone on the receiving end of rabbinic abuse and corruption, and therefore I can provide you with actual proof of what is transpiring in today's rabbinic world. To put it briefly, what is happening is that rabbis are distorting halacha by protecting women who go to civil courts against halacha, while at the same time prosecuting their husbands with viciousness for pursuing their halachic rights. They utilize mafia tactics such as public shaming, excommunication, stripping husbands of their assets, children, and even causing them to go to jail. These actions have far-reaching consequences which include the avarice of Iblis Hadin, Sinas Chinam, Lashem Hara, Motsi Shemra, Eishis Ish, Mamzerim, Megalaponim Bator Shalok HaAlocha, and Chil Hashem, all in one package. To see examples of all of this, click on the links below in the description box. All of this corruption is being done under the guise and false narrative that these women are Aguna victims who need to be protected. But the reality is that these rabbis are only tools of the feminists who promote their agenda at any cost, even if it violates halacha. The outcome of their corrupt schemes is not only the direct shaming, harming, and damaging of these men and alienation of their children, but also the fact that through their assistance to these women, they are complicit in the heinous sins of Aishas Ish and creating Mamzerim, which Hashem will simply not allow to continue at this alarming rate and will be held accountable by the Bezdin Shomailah. They are destroying families on a weekly basis, with most of you being oblivious to what is happening. This is not me being an alarmist or propagating false narratives, but instead I am simply illustrating to you what these rabbis have been doing for decades by using my case as one example. As I said before, it was Chazal who identified rabbinic corruption as a source of tragedies, not me. Let me quote to you some more sources from the Torah that explain the source of pandemics and to which the rabbis who are supposed to cite from these sources have instead concealed them from us. The Mishnah in Ovis, Perak 5, Mishnah 8, states that plague come to the world for sins that are punishable by death at the hands of a bezin, but when there is no bezin to mete out this punishment, then Hashem uses a plague. Asks the Rabbeinu Yonah right there, then why decimate communities when the sin lies with individuals? He answers that plagues will affect us for sins that our leaders are aware of, and we chose to look away and do nothing about it, and will also spread it to the rest of the world. However, those sins that the leaders are unaware of, and therefore cannot rebuke those individuals, then the public is not punished for such sins. In Parshish Yisro 20, Pasuk 13, in the Ten Commandments, it says, Lo Timoth, you shall not commit adultery. The commentary, Yonason ben Uziel, states there, you should not associate with, be partners with, 
or praying the same shul with any adulterer, which includes he or she that has caused the adultery. Because Hashem brings plague or pandemics because of adultery. Let's review again what Jonas and Ben Uziel stated. Do not commit adultery. Do not associate with adulterers or the neighborers of adultery. And do not daven in the same shul with them. This means that the rabbis must decline officiating a marriage of a woman previously divorced with an unknown get, unkosher get, or a person from being a witness to this new marriage or even attending such a wedding. These are the people that we should be throwing out of our shuls, and not the men that you label as get refusers, but in reality are not get refused by exercising <clears throat> their halachic rights relating to divorce. <clears throat> then we have the Gemara Yerushalmi Yevamas, Perak 8, Halacha 3. Rabbi Hanina states that Hashem brings a pandemic every 60 to 70 years <clears throat> to eradicate the Mamzerim amongst us, and he kills the innocent with them as to not publicize who are the Mamzerim. Allow me to share with you several recent events that will shed more light on this problem. Once again, I will be linking the documents relevant to these cases below so you can verify all that I'm telling you for yourself. Recently, a Mexican Jew who was undergoing divorce went to Israel and the Rabbanut there prevented him from leaving the country as a means to coerce him to give his wife a get. All this was despite the fact that the young man provided a letter to the Rabbanut from his Besden in Mexico City that he was fully compliant with halacha and that it was his wife who went to civil courts and prevented him from visiting with his children. So what exactly is going on here? Who gave the Rabbanut, the chief rabbinate of Israel, permission to override another Besden, especially one that knows all the details of the case? Why are they giving assistance to a violator of the Torah, namely the woman who has gone to civil court? Why are other rabbis silent in the face of this halachic infraction? And unfortunately, this is not merely one incident, but it is occurring daily all over the world by many Besdens, whose judgments consist of anything and everything except halacha. According to Allah, a coerced get is invalid and anyone marrying with such a get is considered adultery as she is still bound to her former husband until she receives a new kosher get. This halacha applies also to women who use secular courts against halacha in stripping their husbands of all their halachic rights, thereby rendering their gittin as possible. Many such gittin have been procured through coercive measures by women and the rabbis in the past few decades. And therefore, we are living today in a state where many hidden mamzerim are amongst us, as well as many forbidden ancient ish marriages. Now, I am, I am not suggesting that all rabbis are guilty of these horrendous acts, but many do remain silent and look the other way instead of stepping up to fix the problem. Additionally, I was made aware that the Rabbanut in Israel has already strong-armed many Besdens and Rabbanim in America to go along with their coercive tactics under the threat that their halachic rulings will henceforth be unacceptable or that their Besdens will be blacklisted in Israel if they dare to disagree with the Rabbanut. I have found that most rabbis have capitulated under this threat in order to avoid losing their livelihood. The rabbis that are honest post their opinions anonymously, with the only exception being Rabbi Gestetner from Muncie, New York, who is fearless against the rabbinic hoodlums. I strongly urge you to watch my previous two videos which will tell my story and to read the accompanying supported documents which highlight how far these rabbinic veered away from the halacha by shaming me, excommunicating me, and even delaying the burial of my mother, Aleah Hashalom despite all the evidence showing that I was in compliance with Allah, while my ex-wife was not. 
These were all coercive measures to get me to issue a get under their conditions, despite the fact that I already had deposited a kosher get written voluntarily in my business in 2008, and in which my ex-wife Lana has refused to pick up. Don't think for a moment that Hashem looks away in the case of public shaming and distortion of halacha, as Chazal teaches that the shaming that occurred in the story of Kamsa and Bar Kamsa led to the destruction of the Beis Amikdash, and guess what? The rabbis there were also silent to this shaming and therefore held accountable. This brings me to yet another recent story where the Aguda of Baltimore is reaching out to the Goyim in promoting a house bill that will help them commit get me'usa against halacha. Only one rough from Muncie, New York had the courage to condemn them for this blatant anti-Torah approach to our halachic traditions. What are our rabbis doing by asking Goyim to assist them in violating halacha? History has shown us that when you involve the Goyim into halacha, they extrapolate from this that they can meddle into other halachic matters. Hashtag metzitza bepeh, shechita, kaporos with chickens, etc. Our rabbis are supposed to promote peace and harmony between man and wife, but instead promote strife and encourage divorce at alarming rates. This is happening because these rabbis are performing divorces as a profitable enterprise and won't let halacha interfere with their potential profits. They also pander to the feminists instead of professing loyalty to the Torah. To understand what I'm telling you, please see Masechet Shabbat 139a and study it carefully. By the way, the numerical value of that page, 139, equals the Hebrew word kotal, which means to kill. Yes, that's right, rabbinic corruption kills. Now, I asked the question before about why we are being plagued by the coronavirus. While it is true that we don't have prophets anymore, it is also true that Ruach HaKodesh has not ceased. I want to make you aware of a recent letter issued by the greatest rov of our generation, Horav Chaim Kanievsky Shrita, about whom people say he has this Ruach HaKodesh, who was asked this exact question. He issued a statement with a cryptic message, quoting the Gemara in Erechen 15 and 16, that a Metzora, a leper, who needs to be quarantined, comes as a result of the sin of Lashon Hara. He quotes the Gemara, stating that this Metzora, who has caused a separation between a man and his wife, through his Lashon Hara, must be sent by Hashem into quarantine in order to experience firsthand what it feels like to be separated himself and for him to contemplate his misguided actions. So there you have it, the leader of our generation quoting this statement from the Gemara about a person who separates a man from his wife, who then brings quarantine onto himself. But this problem is even more magnified with the fact that corrupt rabbis are distorting the Torah in order to create strife between man and wife and create mamzerim and eshet ish in the process. The Rav's words dovetail with the message that I am delivering to you today. Now how do we solve this problem? This is a very difficult matter to tackle because most of us are sheeple who let the rabbis guide us along. But it is those same rabbis who are complicit in the corruption that tell you to disregard my statements as simple nonsense coming from a person who has been excommunicated. So we have corrupt rabbis, then we have the silent rabbis who are afraid to rock the boat, and then the corrupt rabbis threaten the remaining good rabbis into submission, who otherwise are left to suffer the consequences. So who then can we turn to effectuate change? My message to you today is to pay no attention to what they say, but instead, Pay attention to what the Torah and Chazal have been telling us all along. Pay attention to all the authentic Torah sources that I have quoted to you to explain the meaning of COVID-19 in our community and the whole world. 
We need to stop being the sheeple that we have been and instead look at the facts and judge for yourselves. These rabbis are leaders only if we make them our leaders. They are powerless if we disregard them and instead choose new rabbis of valor, strength, conviction, and truth-seeking. There have been countless letters from Gedolim in the past decrying the corruptive practices occurring in matters of Jewish divorce. Read the letters linked below, none of which I myself have written, and educate yourself. I believe that Hashem is having most of us to self-quarantine in order to reflect on what is happening around us. We as Jews are responsible for each other, also known as Kol Yisrael Arevim Zelazeh. And therefore, if we remain silent about sins committed by others, then those sins are passed on to us. Let us pay very close attention. Perhaps we are being quarantined to show us that we need to distance ourselves from our previous associations. We need to examine every aspect of our lives, including examining our rabbis, and to ascertain if they have been loyal to the Torah, and if not, then stay away from those shuls where the rabbis or the congregants who promote or support adultery neighbors or force gitten are in. We are being quarantined worldwide as a sign from Hashem to do serious introspection as to what needs to be fixed and whether we have been complacent in the task. Hashem is saying to us, I don't want your extra Tehillim or Tefillahs or mass gatherings at the Kosel or Madison Square Garden. I want you to hit the reset button. He wants action and serious teshuva, which includes eradication of sinas chinam and corrupt rabbis who pervert justice and cause strife amongst us. The prophet Shmuel chastised King Shaul as to why he left the Amaleki king alive along with Amaleki animals. King Shaul responded that the people had mercy on the animals and they want to sacrifice these animals to Hashem. Shmuel responded that it wasn't your job to rationalize, but to follow the commands of Hashem. Hashem does not want the sacrifices, but wants our devotion to His Torah and mitzvahs. So the answer to avert this plague is not more tefillah and tehillim, as once again being guided by the false rabbis, but by meaningful change that Hashem wants from us, which is to stop sinas chinam, stop perverting justice, stop destroying families, and commit to uphold all the Torah, irrespective to what the populace wants. But the rabbis won't tell this to you, so that they can continue exerting their power over you and misguide you and lead you to believe that tragedies can be helped by saying a few more chapters of Tehillim, or by doing more chesed, etc. Their advice on the surface seems pretty noble and genuine, but very deceiving in that they failed to address the real elephant in the room. The base Samegdash was destroyed for sinas chinam, baseless hatred. What has happened with our Bate Dinan in regards to divorce matters is nothing short of Russian Hara, Motsi Shemra, destroying families, perversion of justice, and perversion of Emes, which is a must-have if our Torah is to continue to exist. We have Torah today, but we don't have Torah's emis. How can Hashem rebuild the Beis Amigdash if this situation is ongoing? How can we profess to be Shomer Shabbos, Torah, or Mitzvahs if we don't uphold Torah's emis, but change and bend the rules of Allah for the sake of money and to pander to feminist organizations? In Parshish Mishpatim, it states, Ve'ela mishpatim ashetosim lefneim The Balatun there states, that the acronym of the word Tosim is Tishma Shnehem Yachad Medabim. Listen to both sides in a case. The Botedinim today are not listening to both sides, but rendering that all men are guilty always and forcing Gitten against Allah, causing many women to remarry without a kosher get and Mamzerim to be born. This plague in mass quarantine has appeared as a tragedy of massive proportions, and it will continue to be so if we don't seize the hidden message of Achtus 
and reawakening as we all just saw in the story of Purim, where there was a massive Kiyimu with Kiblu Ayehudim, the Jews in the Purim story decided to hit the reset button and make a wholehearted commitment to be 100% loyal to Taurus Emes and nothing else. I and many other men have been also socially distanced or quarantined unlawfully due to rabbinic corruption and perhaps this is a wake-up call to all of us, I beg of you and urge you to make the decision and commit to hit the reset button once again. And if enough of you commit to dismantle the shameful state of our Bate Dinim and corrupt rabbis, then we can once again hope to turn this crisis into a state of Hoshibu Shoftenu Kevorishono. And if we succeed in Mircha Hashem, this will be a great schus for Klai Yisrael, and hopefully will bring shalom in Klai Yisrael and help usher the Mashiach very soon in our days. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.